Ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we have uh, told in the morning, this is a continuation of the African Day, uh, which we started uh, at 11. Uh, we had uh, two hours break. Now we are back, and. Uh, uh, the agenda of the meeting will be uh, uh, now uh, an opening by uh, Nermin El Sadani, who is the chair of the Africa IGF. Uh, will be followed by a presentation of the report of the Cairo IGF by myself. We'll have uh, lessons learned from the uh, Arab uh, IGF. Then we'll have uh, uh, successful experience and uh, key recommendation from each of the sub-regional IGF. Then we'll go for uh, key conclusions uh, on the ITRs uh, from uh, APC and uh, on uh, Francophonie action plan by uh, OEF, and we'll have uh, hopefully uh, around half an hour of discussions and uh, closing will be done by August Yanke of the African Union. Uh, Nermin, uh, I think I'm going to give you the floor to moderate uh, this conference. Thank you, McCain, and good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome you on board of the African IGF reporting back session. Uh, Egypt has proudly um, hosted the first African IGF on the 2nd to 4th of October in Cairo at the Smart Village. We were privileged to have participants from all stakeholders, academia, government, uh, civil society, private sector from about uh, 31 African countries. The number of participants re reached 230 participants. We had 52 remote participants from 21 countries, which is uh, quite a good sum of even remote participation. Our discussions covered a wide range of, uh, of issues, as well as feeding back from the five regional IGFs, North Africa, West Africa, East Africa, South Africa. And uh, the event was inaugurated by His Excellency, the Minister for Communications and Information Technology of Egypt, Engineer Hani Mahmoud and witnessed quite a um, good amount of, part of, uh, of discussions and uh, exchange of ideas and, uh, and views. Today, our session will start by um, reporting back on this event by our colleague and uh, organizer of the event, uh, UNECA, McCain Fay, will give us a um, summary of the discussion reports in Cairo event. McCain, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to give you a brief uh, account of uh, the main uh, actions in uh, the African IGF, which was held in, uh, in Cairo. This was the first meeting, uh, and uh, the objective of the African IGF is uh, uh, to have a platform for an inclusive, multilateral, multi-stakeholder, and multi lingual discussion for platform on issues pertinent to the internet in Africa in general and internet governance issues in particular. Uh, the meeting was uh, organized uh, by uh, ECA's African Union, the government of Egypt with uh, uh, international sponsors which uh, facilitated the meeting, Uniforum SA with uh, its Dot Africa project, APC, NEPAD with Google, and the uh, Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. We had uh, three pre conference events uh, the Innovation Prize for Africa with uh, UNECA, uh, the ITRs with uh, APC, uh, NEPAD, Google, and the OIF. Uh, which dealt with uh, emerging issues in uh, digital francophonie. Uh, we had multi-stakeholder participation from uh, member states, African member states, 
academia, private sector, civil society, uh, regional and international organizations. Uh, for the regional and national uh, IGF uh, participants, we had uh, presentations from North Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, West Africa, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, DRC, Uganda, Benin, Nigeria, Kenya, and Tunisia. Uh, these are the following issues from regional and national IGFs. Uh, among other issues, the following were written from the diverse experiences of regional and national IGF initiatives. Prior consultation is needed to identify the national actor whose attributes, experiences, and expertise makes it the most suitable to play the role of the convener. Uh, engagement of, uh, from all stakeholders is needed in the IGF. Discussion needs to begin with uh, uh, online uh, discussions before the face-to-face -face meetings are organized. Uh, we need also the involvement of the national regulatory agency. Uh, capacity building and awareness raising is also oh, very important in uh, uh, IG issues throughout the process. Uh, there are also recommendations which came from the main IGF teams on access and diversity, emerging issues, managing critical internet resources, intergovernment governance for development, security, openness, and privacy. Uh, below are specific recommendations on the African Internet Governance Forum. Uh, participants agreed to consolidate ongoing national IG initiatives to begin IG processes in all countries where none exist, to engage in capacity building and awareness raising, to engage with new communities so they understand what IG is, to recruit champions for different causes at national level, to broaden participation, to better engage with government at national level, to engage more continental actors who share mandates and objectives similar to the African IGF, to establish a remote participation team with the African IGF Secretariat, and invest on the needed technology to enable Africans to benefit from remote participation at all ICT events which are held uh, globally. Uh, on African digital representation, which was uh, also discussed, the specific recommendations are uh, as follows. Ensure and source more funding for African participation. Implement the recommendations of the Council of ICT Ministers, which were held in Khartoum in September. Ensure that the Af Af Icon African Strategy Plan draft outline is turned into a fully-fledged strategy document. All stakeholders also are requested to participate in the implementation of the coordination mechanism as recommended by the Council of Ministers of ICT in uh, Khartoum. Countries should organize national IGF with the involvement of all stakeholders. AUC and ECA should support promotion of African ICT businesses. The youth should be supported in IG issues. Use of social networks also is uh, recommended to engage in IG, on IG debate. Uh, remote participation in national, sub-regional, regional, and international IGFs should be also widely used. Uh, in conclusions, uh, I, uh, on behalf of the UN Economic Commission for Africa, the AU, and all the organizers, we would like to thank all the participants of the Cairo conference and also the participants who are currently participating in this workshop we are holding in, in Baku. And we are also looking forward to receiving applications from any country which would like to organize the African IGF 2013. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, McKin. Um, colleagues, as you know, that African IGF has been the latest in the, in the row, and we need to uh, learn from others' experience as well how to run the, the, the platform of the African IGF and, and what, what are the lessons learned from different experiences. For this, I would like to call upon my colleague Hisham Abul Yazid to give us a briefing on the Arab IGF that has been lately as well um, initiated in uh, Kuwait.
a couple of months ago. Hisham, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Namin, and uh, uh, I wish also to thank uh, McCain for inviting us to uh, to be part of this uh, panel. Uh, at the out uh, at the outset, I uh, I wish actually to 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 say that the Arab IGF is still also a, a young experience. Uh, the, this uh, uh, this year was the first round for the uh, the Arab IGF. Uh, it has been uh, a long path uh, till we have reached the the establishment of this forum. Uh, uh, it was uh, due to our several initiatives and uh, activities by the League of Arab States and the uh, ESQA. Um, the uh, the event in Kuwait uh, actually was uh, organized in October last month. Uh, it was hosted by the Kuwaiti Information Technology Society, uh, KITS, uh, an NGO, uh, of course under the umbrella of the organizations uh, of League of Arab States and uh, uh, and ESQA. Uh, the uh, event will, was uh, overwhelmingly uh, uh, satisfying in terms of participation. It was participated by nearly 300 uh, participants from across uh, the Arab uh, countries, uh, from 18 countries specifically. We have uh, had five main sessions. We have uh, proposals for workshops similar to the uh, to the way the IGF here is organized. We had 15 workshop proposals on, on different topics. Uh, the overarching theme was a better internet for a better Arab world. Uh, the main themes were around uh, the uh, classical topics maybe of uh, access and diversity, uh, critical internet resources, uh, openness, uh, security, uh, youth. Uh, those five pillars of, of or uh, main themes were actually uh, formulated through a process that uh, was engaging for the uh, for the whole community. Uh, the the establishment of the Arab IGF was back in in January in in, an, in a consultation meeting in in Beirut. Uh, following that, we have uh, formulated uh, a multi-stakeholder advisory group, uh, which have representation from different stakeholder groups, from government, uh, civil society. Uh, private sector, technical community, uh, organizations working in the Arab region as well. Uh, the, 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 the MAG, the Arab MAG, uh, actually I, I see a number of people here from, from the Arab MAG and Mr. Tijani here uh, is one of the active members with us. Uh, they have formulated this program to reflect the priorities of, of the region. Uh, we have had two meetings for the Arab MAG, uh, one in uh, June and another uh, in September. Uh, during those two meetings, we were able to formulate the five, me five themes and also to review the, the, uh, the proposals we have received for, for workshops and select or, or shortlist those uh, proposals and end up with the 15 uh, selected, uh, selected workshops. Uh, the, the event in Kuwait itself, uh, the, the, the main outcomes we see is, of course, the engagement of, of the Arab region in the discussion. Uh, obviously, there is huge interest uh, across the Arab countries, across the Arab world, uh, in uh, issues related to, to the Internet governance. Uh, one challenge we have uh, noticed very clearly, though, that the term Internet governance in itself uh, is not self-explanatory to, to the extent we would expect. Uh, this was a comment we have uh, received a, a couple of times. Uh, in terms of, of the outcomes, also we uh, we were very happy to see the emergence of uh, three dynamic coalitions on three very important topics that were discussed uh, in Kuwait. Uh, one dynamic coalition was on IXPs and integrating infrastructure in, J in the region. Uh, another one was on uh, child online protection, and the third one was on the domain name industry development uh, across the Arab world and how to address uh, those challenges. Uh, the, the highlights were mainly the engagement of youth. Uh, this was uh, from the remarks we have received from the workshop we have organized here at the, uh, the IGF. Uh, most of the people that have participated in Kuwait have highlighted how uh, the session about youth was really uh, engaging and, uh, and uh, to, to a great extent an eye-opener uh, for most of us as uh, policy makers. Um, uh, through the year, we have also maintained uh, an approach to, to engage the community. We have provided for uh, remote participation. Uh, we have tried to uh, 
to spread the message. We have established a website and a mailing list that is uh, open for registration through the website. Uh, so that to, to keep the process going throughout the year, not just one event, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, to respond the, to the question uh, uh, or the, the issue that McCain has reflected to uh, uh, about the lessons learned, uh, one thing we have uh, kept in mind that early preparation is always needed. Uh, and of course, the sustainability of the model itself. Uh, you cannot uh, really uh, deny the importance of, of these elements. Uh, getting people to, to Kuwait needed uh, some support. We were lucky to find uh, uh, those kind sponsors that, uh, that enabled us to also offer fellowships to a limited number, but still uh, it, was, uh, it was important to have. Uh, and um, uh, that, that was among the, the main uh, elements we, we, have, uh, we have kept in mind from Kuwait. Uh, going to uh, 2013, uh, we now have uh, received uh, interest from uh, three uh, countries uh, for uh, hosting the event uh, next year. Uh, we will uh, announce uh, a due process for selecting those uh, uh, among those uh, applications to, to make sure that the process continues for the long term as well. Thanks, Hisham. Now we would like to hear from uh, the regional IGFs, and I would like to start by my colleague Alice Monia to give us a brief in five minutes, please, Alice, about the East Africa IGF. Uh, Alice uh, and uh, colleagues, uh, what we need from the uh, regional IGF, as uh, early discussed, was to see, uh, to share experience on their successful undertaking and come up with one or two key recommendations for the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Alice Munya from Kenya. I've been the convener of the East African IGF since 2008. Um, the East African IGF was the first regional IGF, I think, in the history of the IGF itself. Then soon after that, um, other regional IGFs were also uh, held. Uh, in terms of just sharing some of the success factors, the, I, the East African IGF takes a, a bottom-up multi-stakeholder process where uh, we identify our own very unique uh, I, internet governance related issues at, at the national level. Most of them begin with mailing list discussions in the five East African countries, so all the East African countries that make up the East African community are involved in this. So it's each country has a mailing list discussion, then a national um, IGF process that then develops the, the national level uh, internet governance related issues and those then form uh, the building block for the regional East African IGF. It's been one very successful model because it has actually gone ahead and developed and uh, prioritized issues that we have actually managed to research on, uh, provide policy advice on, uh, and take further uh, to implement. Uh, and one very good example is a study that was done in 2008, having identified the weakness of uh, uh, East African CCTLDs. Uh, we looked at ways of strengthening CCTLDs in the East Africa region, and the study has gone ahead to inform some of the decisions that are being made at the AFTLD level. Another one is on cybercrime, where Kenya is currently conducting a study on how cybercrime affects women differently. So we, we made sure from the very beginning that the East African IGF was going to be dealing with very concrete issues, identifying a concrete issue and discussing it at that national level, ensuring that all the stakeholders are involved. In terms of participating stakeholders, We've got industry, the technical community, the private sector, members of parliament, uh, governments, civil society, uh, all participating, and not just in terms of the discussions, but also financing the processes at the national and regional level. Uh, we've also got quite a number of global part partners, Nominet, AT&T, uh, ICANN, uh, and uh, so many others. Uh, if you went to our website, you'll be able to see the list of um, uh, participating partners. So it's become quite um, a partnership, uh, a very valuable partnership uh, that uh, seriously takes into consideration uh, the fact that the internet is also very important at the, uh, at, at the national, regional, and global level, and that the multi-stakeholder partnerships 
also are important and have an impact. Now, the first East African IGF was held in Nairobi. Uh, the fifth one was also held in Nairobi. And the difference between the, the very first one and this one this year that was held in Nairobi was that we recognized that we could not get away from what was affecting the region and the current issues that were being discussed. And so we had a full day that just was just dedicated to discussing the international regulat regulations, the ITR, uh, creating awareness and creating a forum for discussions uh, amongst the various stakeholders on the ITRs and, and developing an East African uh, position. So that was what was different uh, from this year. But also learning that it's very, very important to involve all the stakeholders at all the various processes, both at the national level and at the regional level. Uh, and the, the bottom-up uh, multi-stakeholder and the bottom-up process is also uh, very important, as well as ensuring that we are prioritizing an issue and working together on it. Um, to get away from the limitations of the global IGF, which is limited in that it's not a decision-making process uh, and doesn't go after very uh, concrete uh, impact, uh, we all know that the impact of multi-stakeholder processes are felt concretely at the national and regional level, and so we, we've gone ahead and ensured that that is where uh, we are able to uh, to leave a certain level, you know, um, uh, to, to ensure that there is impact, that the IGF itself has an impact. Uh, we are pleased that the IGF has also contributed, that the model itself, the multi-stakeholder model itself, has contributed to um, ensuring that other policy processes are multi-stakeholder in nature, for example, developing the ICT policy in Kenya, or even developing an, uh, an East African position on the, on the upcoming wicket and, and ITRs. I think I'll stop there and rather yeah, respond to questions later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Um, now may I give the floor to Nena to brief us on the West Africa IGF? Thank you. I'm just going to try and read out what I've written. Since I am the rapporteur, I would like to make life easier for myself. My name is Nenna. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, West Africa IGF. Um, West Africa IGF is comprised of 15 countries. That's about 310 million in, pop in population, which is roughly the third of the African population. Ten countries have held at least one face-to-face -face national IGF. <coughs> the website is waigf.org. The Twitter handle is the same, waigf, and Facebook is waigf. It's been spearheaded by a consortium under the leadership of FOSFA, and for now it has held five regional meetings. It has a team managing list, a team mailing list, and a list for national resource people and countries have their own mailing lists. Quickly, what has worked within the West Africa IGF? I've listed six in consultation. Can you hear me? Okay. I've listed six of the things that have worked and have been mandated to ask a few questions. The first thing that has worked that we've noticed is that in countries where government is really engaged, the IGF has worked better. And this is the case in Senegal, in Nigeria, in Benin, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Gambia, and in Sierra Leone. The other thing that has proved successful is having a standby IGF coordinator whose expertise supports national resource people and national processes. So within FOSFA, it has engaged an IG coordinator um, who is actually here in the person of Judy Thokite. Judy, if you can wave, please. Judy has been supporting that process across uh, West Africa and into other regions. The other thing that has worked is to have a website with a webmaster that has a contract. So the waigf.org is a domain name that belongs to us. It's hosted on a dedicated server, paid for by the project, with its own webmaster that works part-time 
And because of the nature of our region, this webmaster speaks French and English because this is a region that speaks actually three languages. So the webmaster also doubles up as an interim language facilitator. He is based in Burkina Faso. The other thing that has worked is that, um, as I said, we have 15 countries in the region. And we all, first we had f six countries, then eight countries, and now we have 10 countries with viable national IGFs. And we've seen that the more we have dynamics working in the individual countries, the better the regional will be. I think Alice has also underlined that. The, the, the strength of the regional IGF is only a component. It's a, it's a, a total of the sum of the strength of regional, uh, of national IGFs. The other thing we need to point out is transparency and openness in management and regular reporting and regular consultation to all stakeholders. It is very important that every stakeholder that is involved gets not just consultation, but when we come back, we also bring back the report of what has been done, and that helps greater input. Um, the last one on what works is a viable social media network. I've told you, we're up, apart from the website, we have a Twitter handle and a very vibrant uh, Facebook um, network and ha that has over 300 members at the moment. So discussions are going on on mailing lists at the regional level, at the national level, on Facebook and on Twitter. Where do we want to go from where we are now? Um, we have had an initial study run by IISD about what's happening in the countries, but we want to move one notch up and ask, begin to measure impact. We, we don't just want to say this happened in this country, this happened in this country. We want to now ask ourselves, can we apply the lessons learned in Cote d'Ivoire to Benin? Then Senegal and apply it to Benin? And ca can we cross, uh, po pollinate ideas and practices and make our individual national IGF stronger and better? The other thing is um, mainstreaming citizens, because um, we don't want the IGF to remain among the people who know what is happening, uh, because ultimately it will be the lives of the citizens that will be improved. So w w we're asking ourselves questions about taking tangible uh, results from the IGF process itself and applying it to the lives of the 310 million people living in our region. Uh, apart from government and civil sector involvement, uh, how can we gauge the, the involvement of other stakeholders, especially the business, the innovation, the academia, and the media, and the media. In Liberia, the media is at, at the forefront of IGF, but we need to spread this across other countries. We don't have one country in which the, big, the private sector is running, but in different countries we have either civil society, government agencies, but what we're looking at is the same multi-stakeholder challenge we all have. We, we are looking at enriching ours. Um, of course, um, Arab IGF has said sustainability. The question of funding for national and regional IGF, we need to, to sustain to be sure that this is going to go forward and a desk is there to answer questions. So the, the sustainability in the long run is, is very important. Uh, I'm bringing forward two recommendations. The first recommendation is to consolidate viable IGFs in every single country of ECOWAS with a high level engagement from all stakeholders. We don't just want one or two representatives. We really want a deeper engagement of government, of civil society, of academia, of media, of everyday citizens, everyone around the table in each and every of our countries. Um, the other 
is to consolidate a sustainable IGF desk. We need to put a face. We need to have champions here. We need to have people driving this. But we need someone who can quickly answer us and send us a report and, give, and tell us what happened and share information. So this IGF desk is something very important for every country and at the regional level. Let me end by recognizing the national resource people who are here. Um, Ablai Kamara is from Liberia. Sagbore is, is from Sierra Leone. Yaovia Tong and Pierre, they have been very resourceful in Bene. And I saw Ponslet. Ponslet is here. Um, the ma there's someone from Senegal here as well. Kura, Kura is also around. I don't know if I'm missing any other of our national. I'm from Cote d'Ivoire, by the way, just in case. Uh, Mali is also here. I don't know if I've forgotten any of our national resource people. I want to say thank you very much. As you know, I always end by telling people that the, Af the West African region is actually the best place to live in the whole world. <laughs> it is summer. No, don't clap yet. It is summer all year round. We don't have winters, we don't have extreme cold, we don't have extreme heat. So it is wonderful, and we have a wonderful um, Atlantic Sea that runs. We have, the, we have the, the desert, we have the mountains, we have the Sahel, we have the forest, and we have the sea. Bienvenue, welcome to West Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nena. I think you have opened our appetite. Maybe you can host the coming African IGF yeah. in Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire, you better host it. <laughs> so now may I call upon Dejani to give us a brief about another newly born uh, African IGF of the North region. Dejani, you have the floor. Mike. Thank you, Nami. Um, the North African uh, IGF uh, is, was born um, uh, last November, last uh, September, last September, in Tunis. It was uh, held um, uh, on the fringe of the ICT for All Forum in Hammamet, not not in Tunis. Uh, I said it was born, I, I didn't say it was organized, because uh, we didn't organize a forum. It was only uh, uh, um, uh, 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 a meeting to, to, uh, to create, to form the, the North African IGF. Uh, the, the attendance was uh, poor. Uh, the uni the um, ACA, uh, the presence of the ACA was very good. We had two representatives of ECA, much more than the countries, because uh, there was not uh, people from uh, Morocco, no one from Libya, um, only one from Algeria. Uh, so it was um, uh, more or less a meeting, not a forum. It is important because it created the, the North African IGF. Um, a good thing also is that the minister who, who opened this uh, uh, meeting accepted that the secretariat will be hosted by uh, the Tunisian minister. So uh, it is a positive point. I cannot tell you more about uh, the North African IGF since we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't hold uh, um, uh, a forum. Thank you. Thank you, Dejani. Actually, uh, the North Africa IGF uh, that held in Hammamet uh, last September was the launching event of the North Africa Forum itself. And I think with our endeavors together in the North Africa region, we will be able to continue and build upon what we have discussed in, uh, in Hammamet, uh, Tunis. Now I would move to the Central Africa region, and Badwin will have the floor to brief us on the um, ongoing uh, development. Bien, je vais parler en français, il y a un traducteur, je vous I will speak uh, in, uh, in, in French, there is a translator. Okay. Okay. Do you hear me? Do, do you hear the trans translation? Is it audible? Okay. Channel one. Channel one, please. Yeah. For the Central Africa, we had 
three IGF uh, first two have been in Congo and Brazzaville and the third one was held in May in Douana of Cameroon. Uh, the Central Africa has 11 countries uh, in itself uh, and uh, mainly there was a 10 countries of the Eastern Africa. Uh, there are five countries that are in the Central African IGF. Uh, in particular, so as the Central Africa uh, concerning the mobilization and to have the multifaceted look at all these things, so this is the work that has been done in an excellent way by Cameroon that I fe uh, congratulate it here. And of course, uh, uh, Central African IGF is existing is now. And Michel so is also with us. He has also paid very good efforts. He has been very active to mobilize the actors of the public sector. And it is the work that is still uh, a lot of things uh, that lies ahead to do because uh, we have uh, really wanted to have, you know, the Gabonese. Uh, the contribution. The problem, which is in Central Africa, is the problem mainly uh, the uh, the concentration between the uh, multiple stakeholders. Uh, and uh, at this time, in, uh, in order to uh, we in order to get the current situation, uh, so we have uh, uh, we have elaborated a list of uh, multi stakeholders of Central Africa, and it was quite difficult. But we have at the level of Cameroon and the uh, Congo Brazzaville, so we have uh, uh, in fact managed to have this list. Uh, at the same time, we are uh, contacting uh, with Michel uh, in order to come to the consensus uh, for the. IGF uh, issues in Central Africa, and, the, uh, and of course this is not the main advancement uh, as it goes with other countries, but we have uh, some uh, other problems that have been already solved, uh, and at the same time our recommendation is just uh, touching upon uh, several points that I will try to describe it in a very brief form. We have said that in private sectors uh, in civil society uh, to have the best possible, the larger discussion of inter internet governance uh, issues. That's the best mobilization effort of ours. Uh, and uh, secondly, we wanted to uh, attract women into this process uh, because we have still have had some challenges in these cases. We wanted to see more women to participate in this process. And in fact, this is still pending as a problem, but we are eventually evaluating the situation. At the same time, we are building the capacities in all levels uh, because uh, uh, let's take the lawyers, the government officials and media, so their inclusion in this process so has really brought a lot of things to us. Uh, at the same time, we have thought about bringing more impetus to this uh, process because uh, many people still don't have the information and we have the energy problem. So the, in the uh, connection to the energy networks is also very important. It has been also underlined in Cameroon. We have also uh, uh, proposed to have the task force. Those are the original experts that will be in that task force, uh, uh, which will, uh, who will, in fact, give us their advices and consultancy in different languages uh, concerning our sub-region. These are the main points, and I would say the lines that we have been doing at the level of sub-regional level of Central Africa. And I would say that Cameron is, is piloting right now this coordination work. I thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Baldwin. Um, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, the international agenda is very challenging this year. That is why we have hosted two pre-events in Cairo before the African IGF. One of them was discussing the ITRs or the Wicked Conference coming up in December in Dubai. Uh, for that, I would like to call upon the APC, the organizer of the event then, then, and Emiler will give us a brief on the key issues and recommendations that came out of, of this workshop. You have the floor, please. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Emila Oshe, and um, I'm a Zimbabwean based in South Africa. I will not uh, argue with Nena on uh, whether West Africa is the best place to be, but for all those who have been in Southern Africa, 
I think it's n you will not get into this debate. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I have some recommendations here uh, that came out of uh, the pre-event that we held at the African IGF in Cairo beginning of October. Okay. Um, Okay, this, uh, this pre-event was uh, convened by the Association for Progressive Communications, APC, and the NEPAD Planning uh, and Coordinating Agency. And uh, we had the support of the African IGF organizers, particularly UNECA, um, the African Union Commission, and the Egypt Minister of Communications and uh, Information Technology, who also acknowledged the financial support that we got from Google. Uh, the purpose of the event was to provide an opportunity for participants in the African IGF uh, not only to, dis to discuss uh, African, uh, not only to discuss internet governance, uh, but also focus uh, on the revision of the uh, international telecommunications regulations, uh, which will be finalized uh, at the ITU's uh, week uh, conference in Dubai in December 2012. We had a half-day event, and uh, it was well attended. Um, and we, we had a, sort of a talk show uh, format uh, where we had uh, the moderators asking uh, uh, questions. Um, and, uh, the questions uh, that, and the questions that we uh, discussions mostly focused on, on process and uh, the general lack of uh, broad-based con national consult national consultations uh, in, by governments. There were few countries where government had consulted widely, but most did not. Uh, some consulted only uh, telecommunication uh, industry players, uh, excluding civil society and internet businesses. Uh, so here are some of the recommendations uh, that we, we, we got. Uh, the first one was African governments should be urged to include civil society stakeholders in their delegations uh, to, to, to the WIC. Uh, secondly, African governments should convene consultations nationally with other stakeholders uh, before the WIC and get their input into respective government positions, uh, positions on the ITRs. Uh, the third was African governments should convene report back sessions early in 2013 uh, to give feedback on uh, what happened uh, in Dubai. Then the fourth was Africans participating in the week should consult as a region and strategies based on and strategies based on regional interests during the negotiation process and uh, civil society and business actors from Africa should be part of these consultations. Uh, the report will be available. Uh, we'll give it to Makane to, so that you can also uh, just read the whole report. It's so weird listening to myself. <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, I'll, I'll, if you have more questions, uh, we have Dr. Mawaki Chango, our APC uh, Africa ICT Policy Coordinator, who is here with us. You can just wave so that people can see you. Uh, <laughs> okay, and uh, we also have uh, Dr. Towela uh, Miranda Jere from the NEPAD uh, uh, agents. I, yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. If you have any questions. Thank you so much, Emuler. I think now we will move to the second pre-event that we hosted, uh, the Francophonie organization and its work on innovation and entrepreneurship. Emmanuel, you have the floor. Thank you. On behalf uh, of uh, International Organization of uh, Francophonie, I want to thank uh, UNECA for this session. Uh, in my point of view, the first recommendation we have to implement in uh, IGF context is multilingualism. Multilingualism is not uh, solely. Je vais revenir la suite. Multilingualism is not solely uh, a French language uh, fight. The fight is the uh, the first language is the first step. Uh, uh, this fight is for. 
Swahili. For Yoruba, my grandmother language. Is for Igbo. Is for Zulu. I, I, I want to spend uh, Macan to provide inter a tra inter interpretation, translation. Now I will going to speak in French. It, as it has been said, the Francophonie has worked uh, from uh, the 2 October of 2012 uh, in the framework of conference uh, at the level of uh, manifestation of the Internet uh, Governance Forum in Africa. The main objective of uh, this uh, association of Francophonie was uh, to contribute to the realization of the IGF uh, issues uh, in line with the conclusions of IGF uh, Global as well as uh, the in, in line with the recommendations of the heads of states and heads of governments uh, of uh, the French-speaking countries. Uh, the goal was also to assist uh, the uh, stakeholders uh, in making their reflections to become known uh, to many circles uh, that will also help us to uh, study better all these issues. And in this uh, framework, we have uh, discussed uh, three subjects, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, the uh, identity, di digital identity, uh, the uh, 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 broadband cable under the sea, on the seabed, uh, and the uh, personnel identification issues. I would leave all these points uh, for your reflection and uh, for, for, uh, for to have your reflection just on these items. Uh, and uh, concerning the uh, digital uh, identities, uh, it was which it, it gets more uh, wider dimensions uh, as the time passes by, uh, and this identity is in fact touch, touches uh, so many uh, elements, uh, uh, but it, it, sl it slips the attention of uh, our society, of governments, uh, and it necessitates uh, to be taken into account uh, because we are facing uh, the challenges uh, uh, of lacking still the a common uh, platform as well as uh, providing this uh, uh, special methods that will can help us uh, to uh, uh, manage uh, 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 digital identity and in this case in this case I would limit myself by giving you several recommendations uh, first recommendation is to simplify the education and the uh, uh, as uh, education to uh, to to manage the uh, digital uh, identity, so through s smartphones, uh, and uh, we can uh, use all levels, even the social networks, uh, to make the use uh, to be more conscious uh, with the environment, uh, internet environment they are living in. The second recommendation is to ask from governments uh, to to uh, make or to bring all benefits of the digital identity to all members of the societies. It means that uh, there are the questions of regulations that still lack and that, that still sleep our attention at international level. Another aspect uh, of this concentration is to uh, to have the personalization of this issue. I mean, if uh, uh, we're speaking about the personal features of each uh, men and woman, so women, so this has to be taken into account. It has been discussed uh, at the round table. All this has been discussed, uh, and we can use the experience of Burkina Faso, uh, which inspires uh, uh, the uh, international uh, tools uh, to have the laws uh, or to give the personalization to the identity issue. And it's not just the issue of the law, but it is also to have the, uh, uh, the independent realization, implementation of the laws, uh, to ensure the respect of the law uh, to the best possible extent, so from the personal, uh, from the point of view of personalizations. And you know that uh, these challenges uh, 
are uh, uh, quite visible uh, in the uh, realization of this task. But these are just uh, recommendations, and these recommendations are relying upon our efforts to encourage governments uh, to act uh, speedily and also to have uh, to make the compelling actions in this regard. Uh, and uh, 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 let it be in the framework of the cyber crime and uh, struggle against cyber crime or other, you know, such negative things. So they, I think that these can be uh, uh, utilized, and uh, the experience of Burkina Faso is very suitable. So we would also uh, speak about the experience of some states uh, that have already managed to solve these issues. In some cases, uh, uh, these uh, states are reluctant or are hesitating to add uh, uh, amendments to the legislation, so which in fact should be another subject of our cooperation. And the third recommendation is, I in fact, that concerns uh, the entire conference uh, and uh, which touches upon all processes that have been s conducted so far. So, and we understand that with the time, uh, we had less members of uh, FGU. We have had uh, many recommendations, uh, but we don't still come to the point at how to rationalize these recommendations. So the recommendation is not just to create a distance, but to go to the uh, last stages at international levels, uh, to go uh, to the full realization, uh, to uh, CDIO and uh, to other organizations to have the, the proper realization and uh, maybe to make some, to make this re recommendation to be more understandable and acceptable by the state and to be, which can be done at national level. This is the last recommendations uh, that can be even at the level of uh, IGF uh, be understood as global ones uh, and they but of course, the uh, uh, broadband, uh, you know, infrastructure creation. This is another point that I would like to raise here, because uh, I think that the, you know the cable the, on the seabed, broadband ca internet cable on the seabed, so it's something very vital for African continent and and a country like Cameroon was among the first African states uh, to have to deploy all its in this infrastructure uh, in its territory. But I have heard recently that these efforts were not sufficient. Uh, and the problem is just to think about the future, so which will be the uh, route that can be also joined by other neighboring African states. This should be found at least. Otherwise, so, uh, these, uh, if these routes will not be defined. This will be very difficult for the states to join. I think if in order to make, uh, to, 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 to solve this situation, it has been asked uh, in a form of recommendation uh, to favor the deployment of fiber optic between the states, states to accelerate the original integration as well as the digital economies at the level of continent. We have also to favor the development uh, of the internet networks uh, because uh, African states are, are poor and uh, if you look uh, uh, at world rating and you will see that the internet penetration is not so developed in Africa and on the map uh, uh, it is localized to, to the point uh, just of necessity uh, and this can be done rapidly. I think that this is a, a particular recommendation. So I think that we have to uh, realize this plan of creating more uh, internet network. Uh, the, another recommendation is to to rest restructure the uh, the funds that are spent for telecommunications uh, and uh, to use this fund to uh, meet the uh, obligations of regional, uh, regional scale. These were the points that I wanted just to share with you and I've tried to formulate it. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. Okay. So we have now uh, the chance to open the floor for uh, open discussions. And uh, I would like actually to encourage you to share with us your views. How do you see the um, African IGF platforms and what, what are your requests from these kind of, uh, of initiatives? And how do you think we can move forward? 
Yes, please, sir. You have the floor. Sorry, it's inaudible. Is he okay? Okay, I'm Ponsley. One suggestion I'd like to make is the strengthening of um, regional um, IGFs within the African um, bloc. And so, um, as a follow up to, to this meeting, I think it's very important when I look at the case of West Africa that um, a lot of good jobs have been done, that those countries within the region who have not really subscribed. Um, to the uh, um, regional IGFs um, should, should try to get on board because that will really move the African ag agenda. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Maybe I can suggest if you can queue on the mic so that we can take you and, and you save the you. time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Abel Manakota from Botswana. Uh, I've had all the uh, deliberations from uh, different regional IGFs. What I want to also mention is the fact that uh, we, do, we do have a SADC IGF. Uh, we have had a meeting that was held last year in South Africa, Johannesburg, where most countries have actually been urged to ex establish the, uh, the national IGFs. And uh, what I want to say, uh, I'll speak from the Botswana context, is that uh, this year we have established our national IGF and uh, the meeting for the SADC IGF was supposed to be held in Botswana this year. I'm not privy to why it has not been held, but I think we are also moving into the regional integration on issues of uh, internet governance. So we strongly feel that uh, the issue of uh, regional IGF will actually consolidate the voice of African uh, uh, countries in aspects of uh, uh, IGFs. So uh, that's, what I, that, uh, that's what we can uh, only say from the SADC region. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Yaovi Atoun from, from Benin. I, I just want to uh, add my voice to uh, make a comment to what uh, Mr. Adovi said. He, he, he talked about recommendation. That is very important. Because for me, uh, sometimes we just copy, we just talk, oh, wh when is the next IDF, or which we are going to organize an IDF in our country. But at the end, we have a recommendation. And he says something very important. Even if we cannot act, we have recommendation. So we have to see during the next uh, IDF in our country, in our region, what, do we, what did we do about the recommendation? Are we going to meet, take coffee, chat, and that's all? It's very important to talk. IDF is very important, but all he said is very important. So my, what we want to say to add is that during this regional IDF, we have to try to find a way to see how regional organization can come. Because as he said, some recommendation can go through them. Also at the national level, we have to do the same exercise to, to do a follow-up. That is very important. And uh, finally, IG is important, is, is, is something very important that should be continuous, uh, continuously ha be happening. And then a way we should uh, benefit from it is to, to try to see what we have done from the past recommendation. Thank you. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, apologize because I forgot to mention that Egypt was represented in the launching meeting of the North African IGF, represented by where is, where is she? The, the young, uh, beautiful uh, girl, uh, which is, who, who is uh, Nashwa Ged. So uh, forgive me, Nashwa. Second point, I would like to, uh, no, I, I, I don't like that, but uh, I am afraid to uh, disagree with my friend AOV, but uh, the IGF doesn't have outputs, doesn't have a recommendation, doesn't have a decision. So if, if we want to make decision, we have to organize other things, but IGF is only uh, a discussion forum. Thank you. Thank you, Dejani, but the IGF can uh, come up with messages or recommendations. So it's not, it's not necessarily a binding text, but it's a recommendation yeah, yeah. or messages. And I think this is what was uh, men meant before. Thank you. Let me add something. Yes, 
So before Jason yes. McCain, we say Yes, it is about uh, North Africa. There is one uh, uh, remote participant who listened to from Morocco, ECR office in Morocco, who listened to what was said by Tijani, and he asked me to add this thing, uh, which was forgotten by Tijani. A period of six months was given to coordinating secretariat of the North Africa IGF to make consultations with all stakeholders to form uh, North Africa MAG. And the coordination, the coordination secretariat, which is hosted by Tunisia, is composed of uh, the three uh, stakeholder groups for the time being, Rida Gelouz from government, Mustafa uh, Tijani Ben Jama from civil society, and Mustafa Mezgani from private sector. Thank you. So, Jason, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. My name is Jimson Olufuye, uh, the chair of the Africa ICT Alliance. There's the voice of the uh, ICT sector from the private sector in, uh, in Africa. There are about 10 countries involved uh, in that alliance now of, of across Africa, Southern, South Africa, Namibia, Egypt, Tunisia, uh, Tunisia of course, Nigeria, uh, Gambia, Kenya, uh, Rwanda, uh, uh, Somalia, and a number of them. Well, um, I want to use the opportunity to congratulate uh, UNECA, uh, it's represented by Mr. McCain and, uh, of course, AU and Egypt and all the uh, sponsors of the first African IGF uh, for doing such a good job. And uh, this alludes to what I want to say that uh, unless the government moves, uh, not really uh, gets moving. Uh, this also is to encourage the government uh, to really uh, take the leading position across Africa. And in the doing that, have in mind sustainability has been recommended and has been emphasized by NENA and uh, others. Uh, sustainability in the sense that you must, it must really be a multi-stakeholder uh, model, uh, governance model, uh, wherein the private sector, the business community, the industry, you know, be very well inv involved. And uh, also the, the issue of funding uh, is very important. Uh, funding the secretariat and getting the personnel, getting uh, contact personnel to be directly involved in IG uh, administration, preparation, and follow-up uh, processes. Thank you. Thank you, Jepson. Yes, sir. Je veux parler en français. I will speak in French. I would like to thank very sincerely the African Union uh, and the Economic Council for the initiative, uh, for this initiative, African initiative. Uh, I would uh, like to value in particular that we have uh, done this, have created this framework uh, because the, uh, the problems uh, in creating this IGF uh, uh, was, uh, uh, was demanded by our, you know, um, urgent need uh, for understanding. So I would solicit right now that uh, we can o o also o ha have involved all structures, OI, F uh, and the CEI, uh, to have the follow-up uh, committee, to create a follow-up committee that can uh, guide us uh, in the same spirit uh, of Internet governance uh, and uh, to help us to understand the mechanisms uh, uh, that can be used and applied in African states. I would finish my uh, comments uh, by making a wish in the perspective we could uh, the, uh, to have uh, the image uh, of an African team uh, to, that can elaborate the African strategy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, to the, uh, our participation in internet governance. Uh, I think that this is the unique chance uh, uh, for all of us uh, uh, to engage all strata or populations in the African con continent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to clarify what I said. I didn't say that uh, IGF is a decision-making uh, body, but what I just said that is, is not useful to meet at the national level 
every year and just talk. So I, I'm, I was saying that there is a follow-up, like if you have a recommendation at the end of the meeting, it's very important if it is to the government to just see if there is some action. So that is my point, just to do a follow-up and not to take a decision because you have a recommendation. If you just to talk, you can talk, but we have a formal meeting not to take decision because then we are learning also at the, at, the, at the regional level, we are learning from the other countries. Something is happening in the other country. We are learning and then we are making a recommendation. So my point is to try to follow up the recommendation at the end of the, the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Toela Jere and I'm from the NEPAD agency. I um, just want to make two comments, really. One is to um, just say that as an EPID agency, we've been helping to um, facilitate the establishment of the Southern African Internet Governance Forum, working together with the um, APC. And um, as my brother from Botswana has rightly pointed out, we were supposed to have had the forum this year in Botswana, and uh, we did receive a positive response from the government, but um, they basically uh, were not able to commit to a date. And so we're hoping that we'll be able to have that um, possibly sometime next year, early next year. Having said that, I think what I really wanted to say as far as uh, how we take this agenda forward, I think for me there's two things. One is that uh, it, I think the fact that the IGF is not a decision-making forum for me is liberating because it gives us the space then to decide how or what we want to do with whatever it is that we're discussing. We're not constrained by anything. And I think that we need to use that as an opportunity to define for ourselves how we want to use this forum. Um, the other thing that I think that we really should be able to do in, in this conversation today and, and, and as we move forward is to begin to think through the linkages between the national, the regional, and the continental forum and, and how we're going to make sure that what's happening at the national is feeding up and also what's happening at the global is feeding down because without that, then it becomes a bit of a problem because it, as, my, as um, the gentleman from Benin has said, there has to be some kind of follow through and following up on what we're discussing. I think we need to begin to think through how, what are the processes and what are the tools that we're going to use to ensure that we are actually following up and following through on the things that we're talking about. I apologize that I have to excuse myself. I have another meeting, but um, I wish you all successful deliberations. Thank you. Thank you so much, and your remarks are well taken. I think it will... Uh Translate again. I just want to make a, a small recommendation. Um, if, you, if you look at the forum where um, this African IGF um, session we are having here, you discover that um, some key stakeholders within the African um, sector, whether it's governmental or civil um, society or regulators, they are not here because of... Um, due to they have to maybe travel early or they were here for the first two days. So I would like to suggest that it will be very important that when we are having our African IGF session within the global IGF, since a lot of co African countries, they, um, they, they um, really prefer to come for the global IGF, we should try to have this in day one. Even if it's late in the evening, we, we are rest assured that they will stay because this last day four, especially where, if we are in a city that is not a hub, um, for, for traveling, and um, people tend to, to leave early. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Merci. Uh, je voudrais... Thank you. I would like to congratulate the work that has been done at this level. My recommendation is related to the national IGF. Uh, for the time being, Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think that the majority of national FGI, uh, uh, IGF, sorry, uh, uh, they, they, do, uh, they do not uh, represent uh, the entire society of this or that country. I think that they are the people from some, uh, you know, uh, uh, cities and some are uh, present and some absent, uh, my uh, recommendation is to have the mechanisms to involve uh, all people, all spectrum in national IGF. So that is very important for us, for national uh, IGF. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, I'm Mawaki uh, from APC. So I just have two points to make here. Um, I, I would like to suggest that uh, 
IGF, particularly national IGF, should be considered as, as a forum to come and discuss all pu public policy issues related to the Internet. And I, I very much like the approach uh, in uh, Kenya and in Cote d'Ivoire. And I would like uh, to have uh, some mechanisms in, in place to share experience, national experiences in terms of promoting good models of uh, uh, IGF processes. So uh, on that basis, I would like to urge the national actors, especially civil society, to consider that the IGF is an opportunity for, for them, for the people, to identify the real issues that they have to uh, struggle with regarding the internet, the ac from access to content development to uh, uh, all sort of things related to public policy and uh, regulatory frameworks, in order to uh, raise those issues during the, the, those deli deliberation. And as much as I'm happy to see that Actually, I mean, even at global level, IGF has come about because of the um, civil society uh, advocacy and push, and government had to accept to offer this uh, platform. I'm happy to say that in many countries in Africa, IGF agenda is led by civil society. But I would like to caution that we need to make sure the government is represented in those forums so that they listen to the issues that the civil society has to uh, 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 raise regarding, uh, you know, internet public policy issues, so that at the next um, gathering, there is a, a room to be able to, uh, to follow up, to take stock with regard to anything that might have happened since the last IGF, especially, again, in public policy uh, uh, realm. So two things, sh the sharing of information, good practices of how to organize IGF. Uh, civil society has really to own the process and realize that it's the occasion for them to bring up issues and to, to be heard by uh, policymakers. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we have remote participation. So Judy, can you present them? And then we'll take uh, the lady over there. OK, thank you. Uh, Jia, can you? Um, a comment from Gideon. Gideon, c can you hear us? Hello, Gideon. Go ahead until uh, he's back. Okay. Merci. Je vais parler. I will also speak in French. Thank you. It is to promote the multilingualism, as it has been said by Francophony. I hope that for the next uh, meeting, so we will have uh, other multilingual uh, formats. I two, I have two small recommendations. Uh, after these excellent presentations, my recommendation would be that I would propose the coordination between uh, uh, different uh, IGF regions. Uh, should be in the form of the uh, shared experience. Uh, so we have to share this experience with other regions. What has worked in this region, this can be, I think that can be shared with the regions that needs this mechanism. So my proposal is to ask uh, each regional IGF uh, to come to aid the countries that are have not still entered this process. Uh, I think that uh, after some period of time, the uh, 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 entire number of uh, these states uh, will be also fully integrated into this process. Thank you. Now I will refer to my uh, panelists, and I will start with Nena to give her reflections on the discussions. Nena? I did not know I was supposed to reflect. I was just typing. <laughs> um, maybe I will come back. Because I've been around national, regional, and continental IGF all along, um, I'm speaking out of experience. We all share the passion of seeing things go work well. And it would have been good that our IGFs 
uh, we take up our recommendations and we just run with them and implement them. And uh, we look at um, regional IGFs where we begin to say, last two years we recommended this and this is what we've done with it. Uh, that, that would give me great joy and that would give all of us great joy. But that is not the situation. Because nobody works for IGF. That's the truth. When you make recommendations, there is that thing called executing body. Someone needs to take it and get it done. But the, the, frame, the, the reality is that nobody works for IGF. I don't work for any IGF. And nobody can force me to do anything that IGF has recommended. And I think it's the same with many of us. So the question is, if we want to turn recommendations into concrete actions, then we need to begin to think about executive activities and functions and getting, uh, and getting work and, and translating recommendations into activities. But for now, we are not there. I'm sorry, but that's the, that's the situation. So we just come, we talk, and we leave. And for where we come from, this kind of talk is expensive talk. Yes. Any talk that involves plane tickets in Africa is expensive. So the question is, how do we get value uh, for the investment we are making in IGF? And for so far, the answer is nothing. Even at national levels, we come, we get together, we make the same recommendations, and off we go. So my, my, my point is, until we begin to consolidate IGF secretariats in our countries that can do active follow-up, at the ministry level, at the level of um, private sector, at, at all the actors where action needs to take place, then we will come, come down to the same thing. So please, we need to think of consolidating IGF secretariats, getting them to work, and, and giving us results. Thank you, Nana. I think um, the remote participant is ready now, so we can we take him? Uh, greetings. It's Gideon Roth from Kenya. And uh, allow me to appreciate the kind of uh, very active discussions that are going on at Baku. Um, my recommendation or comment is uh, that uh, we need to have more synergy between the, I mean, among the, the regional IGFs because there are a lot of rich discussions that go on, but just like Luna said, there is no action at the recommendations that have been made. We will all be just talking and leaving everything in, in the paper year after year. So my suggestion is uh, to have more synergy between, I mean, among the regional IGFs and as well try to see how to involve governments and ways to see that these recommendations can, can be um, activated and can be made practical, especially now that we have very many issues like cybercrime and the rest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alice, can I refer back to you to give your insight? Uh, thank you, and I appreciate the very vibrant uh, discussions. I would like to share with you um, some excerpts of um, uh, a study that ISOC has conducted on the Kenya IGF. It's one very successful case study, uh, which has proven that the multi-stakeholder model and indeed the Internet Governance Forum model really does work at the national level. Uh, so, you know, I think I would like to offer a rebuttal that it does work. And for Kenya, we have very, very concrete and very concrete examples uh, where the impact of the IGF is felt. The multi-stakeholder model of Internet governance itself at the policy level, well felt, um, taking up very, very concrete issues to the point where they then form part of the meaningful discussions for policy processes. Uh, and we begin, for example, with the ICT policy process, currently with our cybercrime framework, where, which actually uh, emanated from a Kenya IGF discussions regarding cybercrime. Um, and there's a, now a cybercrime framework taking place, in, and including research on, on women and cybercrime. There's a study now on, on just the, multi the bottom up multi stakeholder model, uh, that is the Kenya IGF, which is the same model that has been adopted by the other East African countries. Uh, and I think my colleagues uh, who are the national coordinators, I see Lillian there and Grace Githaiga for the Ugandan IGF and for the Kenya IGF. Uh, and the role of various stakeholders, I think without having involved, the Kenya IGF does, make sure, does involve the government industry very concretely. 
uh, civil society, academia, the media, and they've been involved si since the onset, uh, including international organizations, which for us is such, is, is quite uh, a fantastic partnership. Uh, and so, you know, I would like to say that it does really work, at least at the Kenyan level, and perhaps maybe our cases are different, the East African region cases are different in that uh, some of our governments are, you know, provide a certain level of political will and provide policy windows. Um, and so we are lucky there in terms of that, uh, in terms of the, that level of participation. And then on top of that, we've tried to get away, to move away from the li limitations of the global IGF and focus on more concrete issues uh, and uh, on more concrete issues that can that impact that we can work with throughout and some of the examples I've given so I think I would advise if those of you who are able to access the ISOC website uh, a study that was conducted by Dr. David Suter uh, and ISOC that's looking at uh, the Kenya IGF as one of the uh, the great uh, uh, internet governance case studies thank you thanks Alice uh, Badwin your reflections please Hello, uh, uh I will come back. Uh, the uh, the mu uh, multiple stakeholders. Uh, the, we, the, the, the evidence in, is in front of our eyes. Uh, we meet here, and we see it as a problem. So I I, I like very much how the Kenya has organized itself, uh, because uh, look look at the list of the achievements of uh, Kenya, and uh, it's really a multi-stake. Uh, uh, participation where all actors have uh, broadly participated and this is the quality of the job. I think that this is the best example that can be as a, as a practice can be shared. I think that the Kenya can be regarded as a model. And uh, at some level, there was a problem of confidence, uh, the problem of person, uh, in particular what we have in Central Africa, those uh, uh, who are the barriers, uh, I think that uh, this is the problem that we are uh, trying to eradicate, and they, uh, this is, in fact, will help us to have this multifaceted participation, uh, and uh, as well as the implementation of the uh, deeper Africa uh, is concerned, so I'd like to point out that uh, how we solve uh, these problems. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we have two uh, provincial antennas, uh, and uh, we are trying to enlarge uh, the coverage area in all province, uh, in provinces, uh, uh, and uh, th uh, that will help us to pass the message uh, to all those that are li uh, living in the provinces. Uh, I think that this is something that uh, is done by us, and we will continue our steps in this direction at the level of the exchange. Uh, uh, that I have uh, said that so we have to share the experience because uh, it's natural. We have to do it and we should not uh, uh, invent a bicycle in a second time. So this is the very simple and understandable. Non -impliqué. And c how to engage people that are still not uh, participating? I think that uh, we have to look at how we have worked and which model can be used. And I think that the, the model that has been uh, 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 that has been uh, you know quite successful in some countries. I think that where the all actors, all governments, and all the civil society, so they can be ta they can take part. And I think that so uh, uh, Ivory Coast, you know, uh, 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 example is something that we can congratulate you uh, on that occasion. And I would like also to say that how we can come to the a consultation and uh, uh, the, between the uh, uh, public and private sector at sub-regional and regional levels, and these are the directions where we have to be more act, act, uh, active. I don't know whether we have don't uh, we have the representatives of the uh, private sector city or not, and uh, some people from government. So I think that with this ideology, so we can, we can move forward. And I would like also to congratulate you all these um, achievements already. Thank you. Thank you so much. We yes, I would like to add uh, three small things. First is all these issues that are discussed are quite good, uh, but uh, to, uh, to act, it's better. I think that this is the essence of all this process. Second small thing that I would like to add is the that we have 
to regulate uh, sufficiently uh, the, this, the the financing issues, the issues of uh, financing the uh, the work of uh, uh, IGF. So I think that the you know the uh, Commission on Africa can aid uh, to have the uh, structures. We have to reflect on it more concretely to lead this process in longer term. And the third point uh, that I would like to say that there is no development without research. There is no development without research. Uh, and so ma how many researchers of Africa started this issue or not? So we have to ask ourselves. And with this point, I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, well, uh, uh, first, I, I, I want to, to uh, stress uh, that uh, uh, during this panel and during the discussion, uh, more and more I realize the uh, synergies and the similarities between the two regions, the Arab region uh, and the, the, the African region. The challenges that have been highlighted, the, uh, the issues that were discussed, uh, uh, they all reflect the similarities between the two regions. Uh, on a couple of points that were uh, raised during the discussion, uh, first of all regarding the recommendations, I think the important thing about uh, the, the important thing about IGFs and this what makes IGFs uh, generally unique that, than other mechanisms uh, is that the discussion among all stakeholders gets everyone to really understand where to go about the, the problems. Uh, the, if, if you go to, to an IGF to just draft a recommendation, the approach will be totally different. It will be just similar to other mechanisms that we already have, whether in Africa or in, in the Arab region. We have the ATU, the, the African Union, of course, the ACA as well. Uh, I, I think the discussion itself, the openness of the discussion, is the key success of any IGF. Uh, the engagement of the community, you can really establish a new value to, to, to add to the mechanisms that we work through. Uh, however, the, the, the key issue is uh, how to impact and how to assess that impact. Uh, the, 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 the effects of, of having IGS, whether at uh, regional, national, or sub-regional levels, uh, the impact assessment is important. Uh, what we have seen also is the they tend to establish national IGFs in several countries. In the Arab region, we have uh, Egypt, we have Oman, we have uh, Tunis coming up as well. So obviously, everyone starting to realize that there is a value in having uh, uh, this open discussion uh, in, the, in the national uh, uh, outset as well. Uh, the integration uh, and consolidation, synergy, cooperation, are all words I have heard from several speakers. Uh, obviously, having several IGFs, whether at national uh, or regional, and of course the international levels, uh, they put some uh, stress on on our participation. How how to reflect on all these levels? I think the key word that was mentioned is integration. Uh, it's it's very important to have the discussions here at the international level, also reflected at at different levels and vice versa to have this uh, kind of feedback uh, going in, in two directions. Thanks, Hisham. Emilor? Um, I think um, we, one of the most important things that uh, came out of these discussions uh, was the need to have uh, collaboration amongst all the um, uh, regional uh, IG spaces. Uh, someone from Southern Africa uh, talked about uh, us having a very successful uh, inaugural Southern African IGF last year, but uh, this year we couldn't. Um, probably uh, we can learn one or two things uh, from uh, the Kenyan um, or the East African IGF uh, uh, the regional IGF and uh, learn from there uh, the good th you know take out the good things uh, that uh, uh, that they are doing so I, I think um, there's need for for more dialogue uh, be amongst uh, the regional coordinators or the national coordinators of the different um, uh, regional uh, initiatives I don't think we we lack the expertise or, or the knowledge to to uh, actually have a regional or 
uh, good um, internet governance uh, dialogues, but uh, we are not. I think we are not really um, opening up spaces to actually learn from from each other. So I think there's need for more collaboration, more dialogue at uh, national and regional level. Thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, this concludes our uh, panelists, and I would like to move to the closing part, and for that I would refer to my colleague McKen to give his uh, closing. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Nermin, for uh, chairing very well this uh, session. Uh, I would like just to thank all of you who are present here for uh, having attended this uh, wonderful session. Even the late one which are just coming in, you are, uh, we also thank you because we know that you have been in several other panels, but what's important is to see you here to give us uh, your support. Uh, we thank also the panelists who have uh, given all what they had and uh, had managed to reply to all the questions. Uh, we thank also our uh, uh, interpreter, Jack, who despite his business has managed to come here quickly to give us uh, one hour interpretation and uh, we thank you thank you very much thank you both <laughs> now i will touch up on before giving the floor to the chair and to uh yankee of the african union for closing i'll touch up on the gag early warning system we discussed in the morning here because uh, not all of you was here in the morning and uh, we are approaching uh, uh, a vital uh, step in uh, uh, putting up uh, objections for uh, uh, the .org Connect Africa application for .Africa and uh, with the support of uh, uh, African GAG members, we came up with a form which have been completed and we would like to request all the member countries and uh, you who are here as civil society or private sector to also approach your GAG representatives to go to the GAG website and uh, log in this form I will be sending and I've sent it already to some of you and I will continue sending it to other people and anyone who is interested to follow up also please let me know so that I can send the, him or her the form to be to be to be logged. Uh, I will send it to all of you who are interested. Chair. Thank you Martin. It has always been a pleasure working with you, and I would like, before giving my closing very, very short uh, remarks, I would like to refer to our colleague and partner as well, the African Union Commission on ICTs, and Mr. Augusti will give his closing remarks. You have the floor, sir. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Uh, je... Thank you, Madam, the chairwoman, and uh, we have uh, the uh, interpretations, and, and it's because I'm speaking in French. Thank you. Uh, in this case, I would like to express uh, our thanks uh, on behalf of our uh, region of the Northern Africa that have, uh, and uh, on behalf of the IGF North Africa and uh, uh, and Mr. Amamet, uh, and uh, at the same time we have uh, managed to participate uh, uh, at the launching uh, of uh, African uh, uh, IGF in the in the Cairo this October, and uh, we have listened to the members of the panel and the participants, uh, and in fact, it has helped us to have the multifaceted platform. It means that everybody was included uh, and covered, uh, and it showed also that uh, all participants and all other persons have had a, another possibility to make an appeal for better consultation, and not just between the public and private sectors, but also to have the inclusion of the civil society and the private sector. So uh, this uh, multifaceted uh, approach should be used, uh, and uh, also by all other member countries for those who have, uh, don't have so uh, IGF, and it should be done at the regional level, and we should 
should also make this progress uh, via the other different uh, meetings. Uh, even if we don't have uh, recommendations, I think that uh, we should definitely have the mechanisms uh, to pass on this message uh, during the, fir uh, uh, the, the first, second, and uh, this, uh, the third uh, session uh, held uh, today. And uh, after also, we'll be able to measure the progress in any of these prog prog uh, directions. It was a pleasure. I would like to thank uh, Madam uh, President uh, and uh, Ermin. Uh, she has represented IGF, uh, and uh, uh, we have seen the successful launch of IGF in the Cairo. And uh, during this, uh, uh, the uh, session has taken place in the framework of the seventh meeting of the Internet Governance Forum at global level. I would like to express my thanks to all, uh, you know, member panel, uh, panel uh, me uh, members of the panel, and all participants uh, that have found their time to share the best practice with us uh, that has uh, helped us to share the know-how and to use it at the same level of uh, 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 between us. Uh, and with this brotherhood, you know, wishes, I would like to thank you, and uh, I am both, I'm very uh, happy to to say that so we will continue to share the experience uh, and to ensure the multifaceted and uh, um, multifaceted uh, process uh, as Emmanuel has said that uh, this should be done uh, in long term and uh, it should be related uh, to internet governance uh, uh, in broad African region. Uh, Madam the President, I thank you. Thank you so much, Augustine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Internet Governance Forum is not an event. It is a process. And I always would like to stress upon this uh, particular idea to note that it is with our expertise and our activi activation of this forum, it, it survives. We have been able to successfully launch the African IGF, and we have been able together to successfully as well sustain the process for seven successful years. I think the coming era as well with all the challenges that we are facing would necessitate that we collaborate together. And I, I, I was hearing carefully to the interventions from all participants. And I think the key words were synergy, collaboration and co cooperation between the different secretariat on the African continent. The African continent has been the model for multi-stakeholderism. We see civil society very active. We see academia and private sector behind the, uh, I mean, among the, the government and active participants as well. And I would like this model to continue. I would like to thank you all for your participation, and I look forward to the African IGF coming in the African continent next year. Thank you so much.